all right people so today i'm going to be showing you the equation of time dilation um now time dilation in my astrolab live which i do every weekend on instagram at astrolab underscore three the people uh talk about the time dilation you know time travel and time dilation and even length contraction it's all very seriously and amazingly and fantastically and f and even funny way related to the theory of relativity and all these fantastic theories right the fictional theories but actually most of them are also true it's they are practical and so is time travel is uh, is practical just we need to reach to that speed all right but uh, before reaching to that speed we need to decode its equation and um, and this is one of its kind this is a video uh, where i'll be proving the the length the time dilation equation more than proving i would say i will derive the time dilation equation with a very with a with a very interesting experiment and that experiment consists of a ship and a person named x so let's say this is our ship okay and this is person x and this person x has a watch to measure the time and that time which has been measured um it uses um, a, a light clock or an atomic clock. Um, I don't know what the name is, but there is a clock which is like uh, a box. This end and this end, they both have a glass and this has a laser which, which, which shoots the light upwards over here, right? And thus this distance uh, of the light traveling can be written as what? Can be written as CT, why? So basically the distance, the formula for distance, we all learned in like ninth and 10th in Newtonian mechanics, it is velocity into time. Over here, it's the velocity of light as the light is flowing from one mirror to the other and then deflecting back, right? And the time is obviously T. So that's why this distance is CT, all right? And then we have another ship, but, but I said that there's only one ship, right? Um, yeah, there's only one ship. Okay, let's take it a bit closer for the simplicity. So yeah, so this is a ship, but this also has got a, got a watch. This is person X and this also is person X. Yes, that's right. These both are the same ship, but what I did here is I just started to travel with a velocity V, let's say. Okay, and now here this velocity V is very close to the speed of light to actually experience the time dilation, you know, that that change in time which we which is our focus of measurement right now this ship moved with v velocity at this point okay from point let's say a to point b right and this is a clock with the mirrors right so instead of traveling traveling up and down like this the uh, as the ship will move with a uh, forward with a certain velocity v the the light will actually travel like this crossways okay now in its time of reference okay in its frame of reference uh, which is which is the person x we have the light traveling straight up and down okay this is what the person x see but what uh, what does the person uh, person y see person y is outside uh, this spaceship looking at this spaceship and this clock according to person y okay as per person y um, as per in which perspective or or, or in which respective uh, we are going to measure the change of time so according to this rigid body here person y this frame of reference person y the light is traveling this way okay it's traveling diagonally and then here then further you know down over here like that and this distance, my friend, over here is our distance C time, uh, C T prime, okay, C T prime, Y T prime. So uh, basically when you travel up and down, um, here I'll do it over here. So basically when you travel up and down, you are, um, you know, you're making, you're covering the same distance, but then the time you take is a little bit shorter than when you travel diagonally, okay? You can just try this at home, okay? Uh, or maybe in your area okay Tra travel travel with the same speed which is the speed of light the same speed constant speed and then travel up and down or maybe you know the straight ways okay this way 
and then travel like diagonally okay at this particular distance travel diagonally and you will find that the that the time required for you to travel from point a to point b this time will be different for the uh, will be different from the time you will require from travel uh, to travel from point a to point c all right and that's why we are taking time t prime over here because that's what the change of time is the speed is same the distance is same but the time is um but the time is different right the velocity is v uh, the distance is ct and this diagonal distance is ct prime now we have all that we needed and we also have the frame of reference for now i will just put the frame of reference over like over here right and this person is seen from here this is person y now we are actually trying uh, to solve and we will now get into some mathematics so what happens is um so what this distance is okay we need to find this uh, this thing okay this ct prime because we just can't say like ct prime right we need to find that distance with respect to something we know because we don't know ct prime right and even if we are calling this t prime so what is that t prime and that's our main goal to find in time dilation as this is the just as this is the change in time right so so according to pythagoras theorem we are using we are calling uh, so Pythagorean over here, Pythagoras over here. So we know that CT prime being diagonal is equal to uh, the length of one side of a right angle triangle as this has become a right angle triangle like that. This is a CT prime. This distance, this straight distance is our CT and this is our VT, velocity and time T, right? So the ct will actually be equal the ct ct prime square will be equal to ct squared uh, plus vt squared all right and then but we need to find what um yeah that is correct hmm. that is all good that is all good that is all good so um now, okay, sorry, um, Vt. Okay, yeah, so this is T, so this will be T prime because we are then measuring it into this. Uh, because this person is seeing the spaceship traveling with V velocity because if you're in a train, you can't see that the train is moving, right? The person outside the train can see that the train is moving. So that's why over here as well, the person Y can see that the spaceship is moving, not person X. But according to person X, this is time T. And according to person Y, this is time T prime. So this is its uh, frame of reference, okay? So that's why V T prime. So V velocity is according to person Y and C T prime is also according to person uh, Y, right? So yeah, so that's why C T prime squared equals to C T squared plus vt prime squared that's where we might go wrong but that's why it is very important to to uh, note that in every theory of einstein whichever you, you will see the frame of reference is the most important aspect in the theories because that's where we deal it uh, deal with it right so now um yeah so now we have what c square by uh, c square into t prime square equals to c square t square plus v square t prime square right now we have a common factor over here this t prime and this t prime so i'll just uh, make some shifting and we got plus v square t prime square equals c square t square and then we have uh, t prime square as a common factor so it's just t prime squared into c square or multiplied by c square okay this can be minus minus as I you know took it this way uh, minus um, v squared okay now here I just remember one thing uh, said by my math teacher over here at the University of Arizona that um, whenever you say that you know 1 into 2 2 into 2 is 4 this into please try to not say it into okay I don't know who taught you this or who even taught me this to say into but that's not what it is into actually means that if you're taking function f of x okay and you have another function g of uh, x okay and if you're writing it as f of g of x so you can say that that g of x into f of x 
that g of x you know is in the function f of x so if you'll see so if you'll say that you know 2 into 2 that doesn't even make sense okay that doesn't even make sense so, so better or maybe it does because you know we have 2.2.3 so yeah so there's like 2.2 but more effective style is is just say it like multiplied by okay so 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 or 2 2 is a 4 so that's one extra information i gave you there so improve your mathematical vocabulary friends so yeah back to the point so t prime square multiplied by c square minus v square and we can take this c square on this side so it goes to c square okay now this term can be written as uh, 1 minus v square by c square because you know if you like you know just take c square over here so it just becomes c square by you know whole by c square right so that's why you can just write it as uh, 1 minus v square by c square right so i do it over here so this equals c square by t square uh, sorry, yeah, t square. And then um, over here I come. Uh, then this t square, if it is visible, yes, this is visible. So t squared equals um, from here, okay, this got here. So t squared equals t prime squared, just a name it, t prime squared into 1 minus uh, c squared. Oh, sorry, v squared by c squared. Perfect, perfect, right? And then, as our main focus is to find t prime, that's the change in time uh, with the frame of reference when we're traveling at very higher speeds. And that's why we can just take this term over here and then put it into square roots to then finally get t prime. So that's why t prime, oh, sorry, man. I should have written t squared over here, right? So, but it's okay, man. So t prime, equals t by under root of um, 1 minus v squared by c squared perfect this is our equation of time dilation now this t prime can also be said as um, delta t which is you know more like it which is um, this is the equation you might have seen more you know this is a professional one Right, uh, then t prime you can just write de delta t now t prime and delta t um these both are some terms used in the uh, used in the differentiation in a calculus and where we refer to such terms like you know x prime or t prime or delta x or delta t as the change in something so they actually is the measure of change and as you're measuring the change in time that's why we just say it as t prime that's why we name it t prime or delta t over here in this case now one more extra information okay so first of all we we may save this equation or all this equation into our head and now i'm going to uh, erase it right erase it from here so the main part is just to understand this experiment and understand you know, these distances what you need to name and after that it's all math and it's all easy it's all just our algebra after that and then i will write this equation over here so this delta t equals t by root of 1 minus v squared by c squared. Now this this term, this term goes to gamma. I mean not goes to gamma or like does not derive gamma but it's just um, is fixed into this gamma box okay so that you don't have to you know spell all of these or say all of these big things. So it's just gamma okay this is a great letter or uh, you guys should know it. So delta t equals gamma into t. Okay, I was wrong, I admit. <laughs> it's just one by this. So one by this can be gamma and this is into t. So gamma into t is basically the delta t. So, so this is a very, very, very much professional equation of time dilation. But if you will say this equation to a normal person or uh, to a normal science geek, he or she will, won't understand maybe, okay? because they don't know what gamma stands for so that's why you, you you'll have to say all of this equation but if you are like you know in a professional university or stuff even if you just write that delta t equals you know um, gamma t and something like that it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine so delta t equals gamma t now we are going to solve something now assume that um that what that v is the 70 percent of speed of light okay this spaceship uh, with x is traveling at the 70% the speed of light okay so our v 
is the 70% of speed of light, that's 0.7 C. Okay, 70% of speed of light. So putting that into this equation, what can we get? So first of all, let's break down the equation into its original form. That's this. Then substitute V square by, by this V square, okay, then you know, squaring this all. So we get what? So we get T by 1 minus uh, 0.49 C squared by C squared. Okay, so now this is T by under root of 1 minus 0.49 and whatever that may be. Okay, whatever that may be. That's your answer. That's your delta T. And this T is your... Uh, is your you know, normal initial time, normal initial time, or the change in time, like normally, like on Earth. Um, on Earth, let's say we have passed like what? Like 10 years. So if it's 2024, um, then we will have what? Then we'll have 2034, right? So in those 10 years, you, you'll write that 10 years over here. And then going through that equation, you will have delta t. So in space for this x person, how much time have passed while we have experienced this uh, time difference of 10 years, okay? So that will give us the time difference between us and this x. So this is delta t is the time difference uh, experienced by us and delta x, between us and delta x, you know. So that is it, yeah. One more beautiful example I would like to give you is, um, is how at at hundred percent of the speed of light you can just stop the time. So how does that work? Let me show you that. But first, I will just erase all of it. So all right. So let's take. Uh, let's just let's just take out our watch, just our watch, and I'll put it over here. So this is our watch. Okay. The uh, the light beam is you know reflecting back and forth okay and this is our one second this is two second this is three second this is four second and so on and so forth so when light beam is going up and then coming down touching the laser again that's our one second okay now just assume that to be one second and then now i will run my clock now let's say that my hand is a beam of light, okay? So so what the time would be, it will be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? And with this now, I will start to travel uh, further, okay? I'll, I'll start to travel further and, with, and then my hand will gain some velocity, right? So one, two, nine, uh, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Can you see the waves? Here we have like straight line, okay? And then here we have these hypotenuses, uh, which we studied now, right? And then this hyper and and then you know we have these triangles, and this is like one right angle triangle over here, right? So as we go ahead, these triangle increase in area. Okay, these triangles all just increase in area. And thus, and you know, suppose if I, uh, you know, put my hand with the speed of light. So, so suppose I'm doing it with a certain speed. This moment, okay, this movement, I'm I'm doing it with a certain speed. And if with the same speed I'm moving ahead, then it will just you know go into this straight line. That's what it is. All right, because until the light is going up this point will have moved forward and so for y you know the frame of reference uh, which was outside of the of the machine which is outside of the spaceship will see the light traveling straight and if the light is traveling straight will the time run because because all time is is the reflections of the light so if the if the light is not reflecting there will be no change in seconds right so there will be no time so there that means the time has stopped when i am traveling 
with the speed of light and like this is the experiment you know when i was like in 10th or so i did this experiment on my book i was doing like this like this like this, and then i was you know traveling faster uh, on my pages and then i did like multiple of this multiple of this and then i got like uh, some experimental understanding of the time dilation in my school days i was small i was crazy and i'm glad i was crazy <laughs> so yeah this is the practical you know interpretation uh, you can even try at home this is this experiment you can try at home you know where your hand is your spaceship and this moment is what a moment in the glass reflective mirrors right so that was all my friends please subscribe to astrolab and please uh, please also follow the our instagram page and come join our community you know come on weekends and we'll have a great discussion over there about space and about this theories it will be great bye